Today on Chasing the Sun, we break out the camo and some new hardware. It's cast and blast beach style. $1,500 gun, Todd's just got it laying on the bottom in a foot of water. Jeez. That's gotta be one of the prettiest groupers there are. That ain't bad, is it? No? Since we're catching these with the intent to let them go, uh, we try to take care of them. We can go and replace that with one single J-hook, which will make it a lot easier for us to release these fish. One thing about this area that's in, in particular, just the overall beauty of it is unlike any other location that I've ever hunted in, and I've hunted pretty much yeah. all over the country. Visit Panama City Beach. AFCO, American Fishing Tackle Company. Yozuri, fish the best. Costa Del Mar, see what's out there. Highs Toggery, premium clothing for men and women. And by Yeti Coolers, dope for the wild. Panama City Beach is well known as the world's most beautiful beach. Its white sand and emerald waters have people flocking to its shores. But if you're lucky enough to be here in the winter, it also hosts a traditional cast and blast. The cast being any species and season, and the blast, pass shooting for ducks on a white sandy shoreline. We had planned to leave at, you know, meet up about 2.30 in the morning. Of course, right. of course our alarm clocks go off and I look at my radar on the on the phone and uh, it's just completely red. So we, I call you up, we kind of move things a little bit to, to reschedule. Let's check it at five o'clock and see where 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 it's going to be at. So at five o'clock, that weather was just about on top of us at that point. So I was like, hey, let's let's get let's get going. We went to the boat ramp. We let that front get through. I mean, the minute that it got through, we were launching that duck boat. With this big water decoy spreads, you want to be organized. You want to have all your, your decoys lined out so you can get them out fast and they're not all bundled up because it usually takes me about a half hour to get those decoys out. I think we got them out in about 15 minutes. Right. We, were, we were getting them out, me and you and, yeah. and Jacob just yeah. piling them out. And that's one thing I was really impressed with was not only the quality of these decoys. These aren't your average, you know, plastic yeah. molded decoys. I mean, these are, I know you made most all these decoys and it's really impressive the quality of these decoys. But you know, where, where I hunt more up in the woods, we hunt little small spreads. You know, we can throw a dozen decoys in a bag and we're good. But you know, the amount, the volume, and, and, and the, the size of these decoys you're using, it requires a lot of organization. Man, I mean, it was a well-oiled machine. One thing about this area that's in, in particular is I get a lot of guys from, that come from up north and stuff, and, and they're used to duck hunting in just frigid conditions. Yeah. And so, you know, let's face it, we're in the south. We're, we're, we're in Florida. Even when it's cold for us, it's really not that cold. And then they're used to hunting in mud and just nastiness. Yeah. You know, it seems like, hey, we're on the beach. That's right. It's yeah. white sand for the most part. Yeah. We got a little bit of grass. grass and yeah, stuff, you yeah. know, some some driftwood. And if you think about it, you look at it, it's it's, it's some pretty uh, nice scenery. Yeah, we're to be not exactly there. roughing it. You're no, right. and no. especially like today, we had some with us. Uh, it's a good thing to have kids involved with. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. You know, uh, they don't have to get out like you're saying these extreme conditions. So a lot of times, I think kids that's tough on them. You know, 
we can handle a little, a little better than they can. And there's certainly times where it's more than we want to handle. Right. But, you know, down here, we've got pretty mild temperatures and you want to get a kid out there and get them on a good hunt where they're comfortable, you know, this is a good place to do it. The ground that we were walking in was just hard sand. It's yeah. like if you were at the beach, so it wasn't, wasn't a real strenuous yeah. or anything like that. And, and just the overall beauty of it is mm -hmm. unlike any other location that I've ever hunted in, and I've hunted pretty much yeah. all over the country. It, it doesn't matter if you're fishing or hunting or what you're doing, especially around here, the way the weather and winds and stuff yeah. can change. You have to be flexible for your changing weather conditions. This is what people come to Panama City Beach to, uh, to take is these trophy redheads right here. Turquoise waters and endless possibilities. Plan your escape today at visitpanamacitybeach.com. Reel down to the water until it's rip and drag. Inside you, there's an outside you. A you that takes the road less traveled than the road less traveled. And finds the comforts of home extremely uncomfortable. This is for that you. Beautiful. Best selection, best service, best advice. For 43 years, Half Hitch has given anglers everything they need for a successful day of blue water fishing or fishing the shallow flats of the Florida Panhandle. With six locations along the Emerald Coast, a Half Hitch is never far away. For your latest fishing reports, check out halfhitch.com. Half Hitch, gear up and get out there. We wanted to go where others couldn't. To fish where the fishing is best. We needed an adventure that we couldn't have any other way. If you're a fisherman, you know what we're talking about. how you trick the ducks. You walk out here like you're not doing anything and they'll start coming and then we'll run back and hide. Coming to Panama City Beach to uh, to take is these trophy redheads right here. It's in full plumage right now. We've only got about 10 days left in the season, so this is about as good as it's ever going to get as far as uh, a plumed out redhead. Do it. <laughs> 
It, it doesn't matter if you're fishing or hunting or what you're doing, especially around here, the way the weather and the winds and stuff yeah. can change. You have to be flexible for your changing weather conditions. In our yeah. case, th that day is the wind was gusting up to 40 miles an no, hour. Was, yeah. And we would have that west wind, and, and where we were, it was blowing the water in. And as soon as the water would slack, yeah. or the wind had slack, the water would just recede. Right. So you'll see us move the ice chest, all of a sudden, uh, my gun is underwater. $1,500 gun, Todd's just got it laying on the bottom in a foot of water. Jeez. I can honestly say that's never happened. <laughs> That's, that's how high the hey, water's For the up. next tip of the day, Captain Todd Jones is gonna teach us proper gun care. That's right. I mean, there that's were times good. in a matter of 15 minutes, we would go from, we're sitting on dry land, have all our blinds set up, everything set just right. 15 minutes later, we're knee deep in the water. Yeah, our, our coffee cups are floating. Yeah, <laughs> I, know, I mean, and, and typically we don't see that here on the no. Gulf Coast, those types of extreme tides, but you know, that was not really tide driven, that was more wind driven. And yeah. That water moved in. By the time we'd move everything, get it set up for that high water, you know, uh, uh, 15, 30 minutes later, yeah. we're, we're sitting out there all by ourselves and the water had gone back out. This right here is my bird dog, Avery. She's a 10 year old female yellow lab. And she's smaller, she only weighs about 55 pounds, which is really nice when we hunt out of small boats. But um, it's really important to have a good, well-trained bird dog out here because not only are they fun to have around and, and watch them retrieve, but if you're hunting areas where the birds are, are landing uh, in, in grassy areas, it can be hard to see. A lot of times we can't recover those birds that we've shot. So uh, a, a retriever with a good nose on them, they'll go find those birds no problem. This was a really neat hunt for me. Um, my lab, Avery, she's been with me for a long, long time and a lot of hunts for a lot of years, but you know, there comes a time, this was, uh, this was her last hunt. Yeah. And it was neat to be able to get her out there. Um, you know, I'd really not planned to hunt her this year because of her age and she's losing her hearing and, and you know, physically she's starting to slow down a little bit, but she loves it and I tell you what, that was a perfect hunt. Um, it's a pretty enjoyable, easy hunt. And so I appreciate you letting me bring her along and get her out there for one more hunt. That's, you know? that's right. And, and more about her. I mean, she was actually with us when uh, my daughter Hannah shot her first goose. That's right. You know, we we're out there that's hunting, right. and she she retrieved her uh, her blue goose and my snow goose. That's exactly out right. Out here in the bay when we were hunting. She does pretty good. She's picked up a whole lot for us. There's yeah. so many neat things involved. That's it's not right. just going out there and chasing these ducks but it's family, uh, you know, the, the dogs that we use. I think sometimes as being hunting guides and fishing guides, the one thing that, that the people who kind of lose out sometimes are our kids You're as right. far as the hunting and fishing. Right. That's why we, we try to make sure that we take days yes. off of that so we can take them because we know how much we enjoyed it when we were kids. That's right. So we make sure we try to take our take our kids. I know, I mean, your your, oh, yeah. your boys are little yeah. and they've, they've been duck hunting with fact, me a couple times. Matter of fact, their on your boat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And fishing and stuff. So we, it, it, it was always good to be able to take Jacob out to, yeah. to duck hunt and he, that is his favorite I thing mean, to do in the world. Is that's duck one hunt. thing that, like I was telling you earlier, <laughs> I mean, to me, that's more fun. Watching that kid, he's so pumped. He's so yeah. excited. Yeah. All right, Jacob, what we got? Got a big old Drake bluebill. That's it. That's a beautiful bird. And uh, he was flying right there with them redheads, wasn't he? There was a whole big flight of redheads came in. There was a few bluebills in there. And you picked them out, made a good shot. Good work. Watching that enthusiasm he has, it reminds us, I think, of, of what we were like at that age. Oh, yeah, exactly. What The reason why we're doing what exactly we do right, right now is because of the experiences yeah. we had when we were little kids. Artificial reefs, natural, hard bottom reefs. You know, so we took advantage of that. Oh, I feel him picking at me. I know, watch this. He's picking on it, picking on it, and one reel. Oh, I missed it. When we're out here reef fishing, you never know what the next bite's gonna be. 
Heist Augury is the oldest family-owned clothing store in Bay County. Founded by High Waist Team in 1969 and still providing the best customer service. Heist Augury is now 9,000 square feet of the best brands for all your work, play, social, or sporting requirements. Select from a huge assortment of Columbia, Guy Harvey, AFCO, Costa Del Mar, Yeti, Vineyard Vines, Berry Top Cider, and more. Visit us at our Pier Park location on Panama City Beach to see the latest in men's and women's apparel. Or give us a call, 850-235-1177. This is why we are obsessed. On the Uzuri, baby! It's the Mag Darter, man! The crystal 3D shrimp. Here we go! There he is! Big bull! Big bull! Love that popper in the side of his mouth. Look at oh, this fish. Crush that Yozuri. You know, I'm a huge believer in this Yozuri paint. I'm telling you, this is the fluorocarbon of all fluorocarbon. Skipping across the surface at Yozuri. There he is! Nice bite! Oh my gosh! Look at him! Yeah, baby, Yozuri! I don't go fishing without it. This is the new Beastmaster 9000. Ooh. This is hard work. More power, better durability, and heat dissipation. Oh, tripled up! Incredible winding speed. An amazing 250 pounds of max winding power. It's the ultimate toy. And with the new planetary gear system, that equals durability. Incredible winding speed. Yeah, that's a giant. 55 pounds of drag. The Beastmaster 9000 is now a part of my fishing arsenal. So Todd, typically when we're doing these cast and blast trips together, uh, you know, you get the group out there duck hunting first thing in the morning, and then, you know, I'll have them come jump on my boat, we go chase some redfish, but the redfish, and I did not think it was gonna be that good because of the front moving through, had a lot of rain, and because of all that rain, you know, the water will be a little darker. So I said, hey, look, you know, the reef fishing's been hot, let's go hit some of these near shore reefs. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing here in Panama City Beach, we have these reefs close, and we got artificial reefs, natural, natural core, bottom, yeah. you know, hard bottom reefs. And, uh, you know, so we took advantage of that. Drop it back down, Jacob. Don't come all the way up. Drop it, drop Jig it, a few times, drop it right back down. Jig it, drop it right back down. And a lot of times you'll feel them take it on the, on the drop, Jay. If you feel them take it, close the bail real quick. There you go. Yeah, you go. that over this one, You know, that's another neat thing about this part of the, the Gulf Coast is we have these, these natural reef bottoms, hard limestone bottoms, and they hold such a variety of fish. A lot of artificial reefs, you, you have a very small variety of fish on them, but, but these out here, yeah, sometimes you can sit here and catch five different species of snappers, three different species of jacks. And that's one neat thing about fishing out here. You know, I love to sight fish. Really, that's probably my favorite thing to do is to sight fish. But when we're sight fishing, I, we see the fish. We know what we're gonna catch. When we're out here reef fishing, you never know what the next fight is going to be. Oh, I feel him picking at me. I know. Watch this. He's picking on it. He's picking on it. I want real. Oh, I missed him. It didn't work that time. We don't specifically try to target one species all the time because we want to, you know, it, to me, each fish offers something different. There we go. Worked that time. That's one good thing about reeling on the on the bite like that, is if you miss your bite, your bait's still right there. Yep. You don't snatch it and, and, and pull that bait off. I mean, that's a great sport, great fun, and you know, that was one thing we did today, lighten up the tackle a little bit. There he is, the smaller snapper prize. You know, they don't have to be great big giant amberjacks, uh, we go out there with jigs, soft plastics, you know, and, and with a variety of lures and catch those fish. That's got to be one of the prettiest groupers there are. <coughs> Looks a lot like a largemouth bass. You still don't want to lip him, though. He's got some teeth in there. But the scamp is a type of grouper. Doesn't get quite as large as a lot of the groupers, but it's a very, very fine eating grouper. What you got on that old jig?
That ain't bad, is it? No. What's he got? Sure. Oh, that's a good trigger yeah. there. You want to take him home and eat him? Sure. Sure. Let's let him go. How about that? All right. Yeah, let's let him go. Hey, if you're hungry, you can just take a bite right now. No. Sashimi. The bigger jacks just weren't there today. Hey, they, they're fish. They yep. swim all over the place. That's they just right. wasn't, wasn't there today. So we scaled down with this little, basically something that someone would trout fish or bass fish with, That's some right. little 4,000 type spinning reels. Yeah. And hey, it felt like you had a great big amber jack on there. Proportionally, it was about the same fight. Oh, big squirrel big fish. fish. <laughs> Got a Boone and Crockett squirrel fish. That's where modern tackle, you know, we fish these Shimano spinning reels with Power Pro braid, and that Power Pro is so thin and so strong, that's what enables us to really lighten that tackle up, enjoy the fight. But when we get that, you know, a little bigger bite, we're not in trouble. All right, Jacob, tell me the truth now. When your dad says, all right, you want to sit at the house and play video games? Or go shoot ducks and catch fish. Which one do you choose every time? Go shoot ducks and catch fish. That's what I thought. You know how I can tell that? Because you're pretty good at it. That's how. Good work. Let's let him back and we're going to keep on catching. Since we're catching these with the intent to let them go, uh, we try to take care of them. Now we have the trouble hook off. We can go ahead and replace that with one single J-hook, which will make it a lot easier for us to release these fish. White sand in your toes, smell the sea in your nose. Touch the earth, yeah, it glows, sunsets are pretty shows. Turquoise waters and endless possibilities. Plan your spring escape today at visitpanamacitybeach.com. Visit Panama City Beach. Half Hitch Tackle. Get out there. Shimano. Focus your passion. Jackson Kayaks. Four Anglers by Anglers. Yeti Coolers. Built for the wild. And by AFCO, American Fishing Tackle Company. If you're catching sport fish with the intention of releasing them, here's a practice many are using to help ensure releasing a healthy fish. We catch these amberjacks out here on plugs, jigs, a, a, a bunch of variety of, of artificial lures. And since we're catching these with the intent to let them go, uh, we try to take care of them. You know, we try to get them back in the water quick, but we also take into account the types of lures that we use uh, and the types of hooks that we have on them. Here, one common thing we do is I'll take something like this Yozuri plug and I'll actually remove the treble hooks from the plug and replace it with some of these uh, owner J hooks that are actually made to go on plugs. And I'll show you how I do it, it's pretty simple. I take some specific split ring pliers. These are not regular pliers. They are made to open the split rings on the plug which uh, operates just like a keychain does. So you simply take the split ring pliers and pinch it on the split ring and that'll open it up just big enough where you can take this hook and get it in that gap and work it on off of there. Just like that. Now we have the treble hook off, we can go ahead and replace that with one single J hook which will make it a lot easier for us to release these fish.
And you'll notice these hooks look a little different because the eye is actually turned 90 degrees and that way your hook sits straight in line rather than sitting sideways. Now depending on the situation, if you're fishing in grass and debris, some people might would opt to turn that hook 90 degrees or 180 degrees, excuse me, uh, so that the hook point faces up and then it will not catch any grass as you pull it through there. So when we go to replace the front hook on a plug or a jig, uh, I, the direction really does matter. On the back hook, not as important. On this hook, you want to make sure the hook point is facing down because if it were to face up like this, you could see the hook point would be hidden by the plug and your hookup ratio would probably not be very good. So when we put the front hook on, you do want to make sure that hook point is facing down. As you can see, we have both hooks now replaced with a J hook on this plug. And this is the typical setup you'll see, the back hook facing up, although I think it can face either way. But this is important. The front hook here needs to face down. I also will go as far as to say, I sometimes, if we're getting a lot of bites, a lot of action, I'll actually remove the front hook and just fish the plug or a jig with one single J hook on the back. And you wouldn't believe the hookup ratio is great and the fish really stay attached well. Um, you know, and, and obviously it makes it easier for us to release that fish healthy. Hey, what a day. I don't know about y'all, but it's been a long day, but it's been a lot of fun. That's right. So we're gonna let these guys go, go get something to eat. And I'm gonna sleep good tonight. Yep. For more information on Panama City Beach or to plan your trip, go to visit PanamaCityBeach.com or visit us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching Chasing the Sun.